A really cool field of study is passive filters, filtering out signals and AC circuits using an inductor or capacitor and a resistor. There are really good videos and resources online. Organic Chemistry Tutor is the one I personally recommend. He taught me things when I was in university. And I think his video on this topic is very thorough, especially if you're studying for tests, exams, and actual mathematical problems. My video specifically is sharing how my brain works with you so that you get a better and intuitive understanding of how passive filters work. It might not be perfectly accurate what I'm gonna be teaching, but rather I just wanna share how my brain works and that whenever anything is given to me to try and solve, I can always work back and there is a physics logic to how this works. So let me start with capacitors. So a quick revision of how capacitors work. Let's say if I put it into a DC circuit, you have two metal plates. You apply voltage in your circuit and the electrons from one side of the plate are all going to start moving towards the other side of the circuit. Over time, there's not gonna be any electrons left. And so you have a positive net voltage buildup here, a positive negative buildup of electrons here, and you have a big voltage difference across these two plates. So initially, when you first click the switch, there's loads of current going through. But as time goes, more and more and more of the electrons are built up on the other side and you're basically losing current. You don't have as much electrons to work with and as time progresses, you have less and less current. So that's the basic principle of how a capacitor works. Now, let's look at the classical design of a passive filter. This is your voltage in, your voltage out, a capacitor and a resistor, and then you flip it across here. So one of these is a high pass filter and the other one is a low pass filter. We'll figure out which one it is. So let's think about it. We have a current coming in and AC current is a wave, right? Whee! And it's coming into our setup here. Think again how a capacitor works in a DC circuit. If you give it enough time to charge, basically the current is gonna get less and less and less. However, in an AC circuit, you're constantly changing polarity, positive and negative, positive and negative. And what if I was changing polarity super, super quick. What if this time was very, very small? What would the current be? Because we're alternating the current so quickly, we don't give it enough time to charge and discharge the capacitor fully. The capacitor is saying, yay, because it doesn't get enough time to charge, it, it allows loads of current to go through, it passes through freely and easily. It's very, very happy. So this is what we call a high pass filter with a capacitor. But another interesting thing that we can do is that we can switch the resistor and the capacitor. The reason there's a resistor in there is because uh, there is this whole filtering process and what frequency you're going to be operating in. I highly recommend again checking out the organic tutor, the organic chemistry tutor video that I've linked in this video because there's no need for me to repeat the same thing. I would say exactly the same things as he does. Now, when we flip the resistor and the capacitor here, we have a wave coming in as always in the VN, and it's a, it could be a, a really high frequency wave or a really low frequency wave, we don't know. Dun, 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 dun. And there's two paths it can take. Well, because a capacitor loves current that has high frequency, right, it wants to allow that current to pass through. Something that we say in, in this field is that it has low impedance. It has such low resistance that that type of current would rather take this path. And there's a ground usually in the system and it gets filtered out. So the high current coming in, the high voltage, the high frequency waves coming in will be passed around in this direction and to ground. They get filtered out, which allows the low frequency, the slow waves like this, where we give them loads of time to charge and discharge, which means low current. We allow them to pass through easily and we call this then a low pass filter. Just to reiterate before, the high pass filter allows the high frequency waves to come in, but if you have a low frequency coming in, it blocks it because it can't, there no current is going to get through. If, it, if you're giving it too much time to charge and discharge, if you increase this T more and more and more, it's just not going to pass a whole lot of things through. Now, the same principle can be applied to an inductor. Let me show you. Now, if you invest a lot of time in studying this, my recommendation is study one thing, like high pass filter with the capacitor, 
and study it thoroughly. All the equations, like I said, for the organic chemistry tutor, from my videos, from other people, and just study that super, super well. Understand the physics, understand the equations, understand the theory. And if you learn that one really well, not only will you know how to do all the other passive filters with inductors and capacitors, but you'll understand notch and noise cancelling and all of those other filters that exist for passive filters. If you know one extremely well, you know them all because they're just opposites or inverses of each other, which is very similar to what an inductor is. So earlier I said a capacitor is two plates. There's electrons on either side. You extract all the electrons from one side, put them all in the other, build up of electrons here not a whole lot of buildup of electrons here, the opposite, and you build up a big voltage um, potential. An inductor is a little bit different. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Let's say we switch the current on in an inductor and current starts to go through. The way I explain how an inductor works is the inductor panics, right? It has all those coils wrapped around and uh, there's a magnetic field associated with the electrical current. And so when the electricity starts coming into the inductor, it panics, it loses its shit. And it's like, no, hold up, do, don't, you cannot pass. You cannot pass. I am so confused. Let me sort my coils out. Let me sort out my magnetic field before I let current go through. So initially, when time is zero, there is no current. And then as time progresses, we, the current is going to increase, increase more and more because the, the magnetic field sorts itself out. The current is allowed to pass through more and more and more until it reaches uh, the, the point that it needs to reach. And I realize that my graph is slightly wrong. If I remember correctly off the top of my head, this is the problem of not having a script and doing this all from memory. <laughs> Well, the counter argument is, is this is as authentic as my brain gets. So you get to enjoy how my brain functions. Now, this time we have a low frequency wave coming in. Do, 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 do. That means we give a lot of time for the inductor to deal with this wave. So we have a really, really big T, which means that there's a lot of current going through. It allows low frequency through very, very easily. This is a low pass filter. And once again, similar as the way we were studying the capacitor, if a low frequency wave is coming in, because of the low impedance, again, again, I highly recommend you checking out one of my inductor videos about this. I do teach about impedance. Because of the low impedance, the low frequency wave that's coming in is going to be filtered out and into ground. And so only high frequency is going to get through here. And that is why it's called a high pass filter. Now, my terminologies and the way I spoke was probably not perfectly accurate. I'll watch this video back and I'll just be angry at myself for misspeaking. Sometimes my brain and my mouth are a little bit dissociated uh, when I try to share these kind of videos. And um, the reason why is because I've never seen anyone explain it this way. This is this is how uh, my brain works and how uh, me and other physicists discuss this. If there is someone else who has done it this way, that's really, really cool. But just in case. But yeah, I hope you found that educational or insightful. Again, it's not perfectly accurate. It's more so to get an intuitive feeling for how filters work. Because again, if you spend all this time watching this video and just go back to the high pass filter of the capacitor, really try and get your brain working as to my explanation, pair it up with your textbook, with your lecture notes. And if you've just learned one thing, a capacitor in high pass filter, you can learn every single other filter, passive filter that exists. It's just working on based on different previous premises and ideas and just flipping things and doing things in reverse. But yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Really appreciate the support and I hope, and I hope you're enjoying your electronics or physics or 3D printing <laughs> journeys on my streams. Bongo full. <laughs>